You are listening to Creating Active Lives with me, Sarah Blytho, and my regular weekly guests. And we are all here to share the research, the science, and the strategies, as well as some of the fun, to help you to create a more active life. Hello and welcome to this episode of Creating Active Lives with me, Sarah Belitho, and my guest, Rachel Warren Roberts. We are talking about the outdoors um, and I, I want to call this episode Think Outside, Forget the Box, because I just want more and more people thinking about getting outside for their activity, whether it's a stroll, a walk or whatever. So Rachel's here because she's very, very lucky in that she lives in Gwynedd, so has access to sort of mountains, sea, fields, every possible aspect of nature that you can think of. Uh, But she's also a fitness professional. She's been working with people who've been referred for exercise for their health since 2004 and actually is one of the founder instructors from the, the Welsh National Exercise Referral Scheme, which started, which was consolidated, I should say, really in 2007. She's worked with yeah, you know, well over a thousand clients in those times, probably more, uh, with conditions ranging from sort of mobility issues to diabetes to cancer to all sorts. And she's really, really passionate, like me, about the outdoors, which might not be where you start people, is it, Rachel? But we're both really passionate about getting people fit enough almost to, to get outside more. So tell us a little bit about what you do and where you live, particularly. Hi, Sarah. Thank you ever so much for inviting me along. Um, So I work on the National Exercise Referral Scheme based in leisure centres in Tawyn in Gwynedd, which is a very remote area. Um, And I teach uh, lots of uh, people in class-based activities, um, I also teach Pilates, mainly most of the classes are based in the gym, um, but I also teach Pilates, falls prevention, cardiac rehab, and I also with, work with the Dementia Active Gwynedd programme as well, which is wonderful. <laughs> and so, you know, from your point of view, you're looking at people who potentially have been really quite inactive in their everyday life, and it's about improving their, their ability their function so that they can start to do more in their everyday life, which is what we're all about. So how did you get into outdoor activity? Well, I was really, I was very lucky. I had a very uh, privileged upbringing in the sense that I lived here. And like you said before, we had access to the sea, the mountains, the fields. Um, And I had, uh, I was very lucky to have parents who were also active, but well, it's, it's been really nice uh, to read through the email that you sent asking me, you know, like, let's have these discussions and how did I get into it? And it's been quite a journey reflecting on how I got into it. Actually, so my parents ju- would just say, come on, we're going out on our bikes, come out on, we're going for a walk. But it wasn't thought of as, as exercise. That's the thing. It wasn't thought of as exercise. It was just to do, go and be together outside and do something that we loved. It wasn't you know, come on, we have to get fit. It was about doing something we loved. Um, My parents met through owning horses. So that was a big part of my childhood as well. Um, Just riding our bikes and my mum sending us out, you know, go out the old fashioned ways, go out, go down the sand dunes. Um, And I always remember her saying, we used to make, this is very frowned upon these days, this day and age, but uh, we used to go and make go off and make bonfires in the sand dunes and my mum could see the smoke from her kitchen window so she said she would know if we were okay and if we were safe (laughs) where we were because she could see the smoke and she knew where we were when we were coming back as well um but yeah it was just a wonderful wonderful upbringing but like I say not thought of as exercise more of just doing something that we love um, and then I met my husband and he was a mountain biker, a surfer. He did hill walking and snowboarding. He was really cool, absolutely really handsome. And I said, oh, I want part of this. Yeah, this looks uh, like a lovely lifestyle. And again, we were doing it because we loved it. It wasn't exercise. Yeah. We wouldn't, you know, we just went out and really enjoyed our time together. And it's how our relationship built. Um, and then we had my daughter, who is now 12, 
And anyone who's had children knows that kind of those initial few years are it's quite an impact. It's a bit of a shock to the system. And I couldn't necessarily go mountain biking and said, well, I could, but not nearly as often. Um, and I found it difficult. You know, my hand, I would say, yes, of course, like lots of people initially, when you have children, my mental health suffered a little, not a lot, but it did suffer a little. Um, and then there was a group of mums and we were all quite active. You know, we would go out walking with our children in buggies and things uh oh we've set up a an adventure group for toddlers called toddler adventure we just used to do play in the woods i i read a blog on from a of a lady from alaska and all these things that she would do with her toddler through the winter and i thought i can do this i can do this if they can survive a winter in alaska with a toddler i can do it in wales so that's how we met all these active mums and then there was a advert uh for an event locally to do a swim in the estuary in the Dovey estuary and some of them said do you want to have a go do you want to join us there's a few of us going to do it and that's where my love for outdoor swimming started I started so when my daughter was I think she was four four or five and then I, we haven't stopped <laughs> so yeah uh which yeah is wonderful but like I say I'm very lucky I've got um a few places that I can choose from to go swimming. Um, and then, go on, sorry. I was going to say, there's, there's two things I just want to pick up on. One, that you say your mental health dipped after you had your daughter. I mean, we know that that, that is very, very common. It's, we're much more aware of it these days. But do you think there was an element of not being able to get outside and be as active as you had been that was included, that was in that? Hugely, hugely. Um, I suffer from debilitating FOMO as well, a <laughs> fear of missing out. Um, and being at home with a baby, not being able to just go out whenever I want um, was really, really difficult. I thought that everybody else was still <laughs> out, all my friends were still surfing and mountain biking. They weren't necessarily, but in my head, that's what I thought. Um uh, yes, yeah, so absolutely uh, that inability to just go outside whenever I wanted to was did make it a lot, lot more difficult. And the other thing is, you know, you're talking about you didn't think of it as exercise. And this is what I really, really want to promote with this podcast is when you have an active life, you don't need to exercise because no. your body's actually probably getting much more benefit from the activities that you do because you're probably working in different planes you're working all of your body rather than a bicep or a trike whatever absolutely you know, it's a much more functional thing and and for me when you are say you exercise a lot and you can't exercise you, you kind of miss it but you don't yeah whereas when you are active a lot and you can't be active you miss it absolutely I I'm, that's the I, difference isn't it I know that I can not be easy to live with if I don't do my ex well not exercise but get outside and just be outside doing something and I, and that it doesn't even have to be exercise it can literally for me be sitting on a beach or sitting by the side of a river and I suppose what we now know as mindful moments um but yeah like if I can't do those I'm I don't think I'm an easy person to live with, let's say. But to me, that's, that's part and parcel of activity. is isn't just being very, very active, but it's also kind of actively being in nature. And yes. um, I know I'm, I'm a huge believer, people who've listened to me are probably aware of this, but I'm a big believer that we actually, we've lost touch with the seasons because yes. our lives have become very, we've lost kind of all the different rhythms of the season, the, the foods of the season, the activities of the season. And I think for me, um, there's there's a really big need for us to reconnect with yes, definitely. The, the shift of the season, the, the different energies of the season. And sometimes that is just being, isn't it? It's just being and, and looking and absorbing and feeling. And I know I was just reading a book about self-care through the seasons and one of it is just find a tree and then lie under it kind of with your head by the trunk looking up at different points of the year and just notice the difference in that one tree at different times of the year and to me 
what a brilliant thing to do because it's mindful, it's meditative, but also it's that connection, isn't it? So does you obviously have a very active outdoor lifestyle. Does it differ as the seasons change? Um, yes, definitely. Um, I'd say uh, in the summer, I am probably more active than in the winter. I love, I, I do tend to enjoy the, I love autumn. Autumn is one of my favourite seasons, even though I, I don't enjoy the darker nights. I do love the, um, oh, I love an excuse for a cake and a woolly hat. <laughs> oh <my laughs> God. Um, and so, so there's a group of us that go dipping rather than swimming distances. There's a group of us that go dipping. And we all say in the winter, we much prefer it because you get that well, you get a buzz on your skin, literally um, a yeah. buzz on your skin. Um, and it's not pleasant. Um, somebody recently said to me, oh, I had to have a cold shower and I hated it. I don't know how you enjoy it. I'll be honest with you, getting in the water in the winter, it's painful, Sarah. It's painful. It's not particularly pleasant. But you you don't stay in for long either. We don't stay in for long at all. Um, so once my breathing has calmed down and well, let's just, let's call it the agony <laughs> of the skin disappears, then you can't, then I go, right, I'm done. I'm out. I've done it. I've, you know, I've done that part and then I get out and it's the, it's the, the jumpers, the hats, the warm clothes, the coats, and then sitting with my friend's somewhere lovely with a warm drink and possibly cake as well uh and I just love it I just love it that's our favorite part we all say that it's so much more fun in the winter and then as soon as that buzz go we you, you can guarantee people get out of the water and go oh the buzz has gone hasn't it the buzz has gone yeah. but it's it's different seasonally it's different um I know I'm also uh quite passionate about encouraging people uh, to take up outdoor activity and quite often they'll say well I don't have this I don't own this I don't own that with regards to swimming all you need really <laughs> all you really need is a swimming costume a towel and really warm clothes and a warm drink afterwards and most people have that this whole oh I've got to get a dry robe and socks and boots and those make it easier those make it easier that's all they do it makes your life easier but it doesn't, you don't have to have those to get started. Um, and it's that's really important, isn't it? Because, you know, people will often think, well, I haven't got all the kit, so I can't absolutely. start. But actually, you've probably, you've almost certainly got enough to get you going. Yes. And if it's something you then decide is for you, that's when you can start investing in it. Yes. Um, but, absolutely. you know, you might decide actually... No, nah, not interested. I'm, I'll, I'll swim in the sea in the summer, but I'm not interested in the winter, in which case that's fine. But it's Absolutely. just, uh, yeah, I'm like you in that I love the summer, but there's a big part of me. I love autumn and spring because I walk my dog at, depending on how I'm feeling, it could be anywhere between five and half past five in the morning. And at this time of year, you're starting to get the sunrises. And of course, you yeah. don't get them in the summer and the winter because yeah. it's either you know, it's like the sun's either risen at sort of four in the morning or it doesn't rise until half past seven in the morning. And I'm doing stuff by then. But I love, I just love doing any sort of activity at sunrise because I think there's there's something, isn't there? There's, some, there's an energy of, even if you can't properly see it, there's an energy of the new day that really kind of sets you up on the right foot, doesn't it? And it's... Absolutely, absolutely. I think getting up and doing something first thing in the morning for me is my great thing. But I also love reading a good book first thing in the morning. So I'll either get up early and read a book when there's nobody else around in the house to disturb me and sit there mm. and observe the changes of the tree in the garden or or something. Uh, the other thing I, I really love doing is... Um, as the, the seasons change, is changing my topping on my cereal. So in the summer, I probably have granola with some nice topping. But in the winter, I do love porridge with 
berries or something that I've been out for a walk and I've collected and frozen and then I can have it later on in the year and a couple of years ago we went uh, bilberry pricking with some great friends we had one of the best days I've ever had just in the mountains just picking bilberries and then we froze them and then in the middle of the winter on one of the most horrible days I put it on my porridge first thing in the morning and I'm just taken back to that lovely day in the mountains, and in the sunshine with my friends. And that was really good. That was lovely. And that's all, you know, it's blackberry season at the moment. Um, so, you know, again, it, but it's those memories, isn't it? And it's those, it's, I'm, I'm not one of these, I must have a selfie type person, but I like to have photographs to remind me of a moment. So I might not photograph every step of a walk, yes. but if it's, I walk in, um, in Colorado and and it might be there's snow on the ground and I'll or I'll take a picture of the same spot on different days because of the different weather and it's it's for me it's me looking back and remembering so I think it's a bit like that isn't it when you've picked blackberries or raspberries or bilberries or anything um it's that memory of oh do you remember that day we picked these wasn't it lovely and this but this is where I think you know for me outdoor activity isn't uh, it is swimming, walking, hiking, mountain biking, mountain climb, all of that. But it's also those walks, um, those those strolls, those times that you just sit with your feet in the sand and watch the waves of, of whatever. And I just think it's it's such an important part of who we are deep down. We are con- so connected to nature and it's something that I think Outdoor sport connects us back with nature because we're not just getting that activity, we're also getting all the connection in there. And yeah, you were saying you think people have lost. I think people, a lot of people have lost that. They've lost that because uh, Ross Edgeley, the uh, I think he's wonderful, the guy who swam all the way around the UK, um, he talks about resilience a lot and he says that you know we've lost a lot of our resilience because we go in the house go oh, I'm a bit cold turn on the heating or put on a jumper yeah. um and I, I really believe that my swimming has helped me with my resilience to certain things when I was ill and I felt uh so I had long covid um a, a year ago I was really poorly I had three months off work but I the pains that I had were no worse than the absolute agony that I was in, (laughs) in the water. And I knew I can overcome that freezing, the pains that I get when I'm in the water, when it bites your skin. So if you can overcome that, you, 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 it gives us resilience. Um, And the other thing he was saying is, and like I said before, I don't enjoy the pain in the moment. And when I've done mountain biking, sometimes I'm really tired and I'm not enjoying it because I've been on my bike too long. And But then I get back and that euphoric, I've done it, I've just managed, I've done a, a, a trail that was really technical and I didn't die, <laughs> I didn't break anything, always makes you feel good. And this is what he was saying, a lot of people have lost that. They No, no we don't get challenged anymore. No, we, we stop. It's a, those of you who are fitness professionals will understand this but we stop at mild discomfort yes. rather than we always talk about stretching you know stretch to mild discomfort we don't get into discomfort and actually we need to get into discomfort because that's when we grow yes. um you know it's that overload emotionally physically whether you're trying to grow your biceps you need that overload you need that discomfort in order to grow absolutely but emotionally as well i really interested in what you're talking about resilience there because i think we, we think of resilience as, as like emotional resilience, mental resilience, but actually it's physical resilience as well, isn't it? Absolutely, um, absolutely. We it forget is. that. And that's where we need to push those physical boundaries in order to to keep developing, to keep growing, to keep moving forward. But we, we sometimes forget. And like you say, if you we've lost that, I'm a bit chilly, I'll put on a jumper. Yes. Um or I'll go and do something to warm myself up. I'll go and go out for a brisk walk. But, you know, again, outdoor activity. Um, there's, there's People run marathons. People do ultras. People do all this wonderful stuff. And, you know, yes, please, the more people you can get people doing things outside, the better. But sometimes slow down. Yes. Stroll. Stroll and look. 
look at nature, look at a familiar walk, but look at it with different eyes and different seasons, look for different things, look for mushrooms, look for different plants. And and it's 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 so I, I think mindful, isn't it, when you you just absorb the moment. And I know a lot of people who are, you know, they're ditching the the technology when they're going out for a walk or a run because they just say, you know, I just want to run for as long as I feel like running. I don't want it to yeah. be a time or a distance or anything. I just want to run for the joy of running outside and be able to do that. Or, you know, for people who um, have a disability, it might be that they're in the wheelchair just going for a, a wheel around or whatever, because it's, you know, nature is it's free at the end of the day. Um, and it's it's got such a powerful connection to us the more we can get out there the better now I know you were saying that um one of your we were talking earlier and what you were saying one of your group of swimmers is an amputee so tell me a little bit more about that uh so Tracy she is an awesome lady um who comes swimming with us um and we there's a lake near us next to a hotel and it has a a ramp down to it so she arrives on her own uh, earlier than a lot of us she's better at timekeeping than some of us and she arrives she gets herself changed into a wetsuit she takes her chair to the ramp and then she bum shuffles down the ramp but I don't know how she does it because getting it past my uh bottom and belly button is some of the most painful parts when you're it's very cold and she just has to plunge in there she's just in there and yeah so she go if there's a ramp she goes for a swim you know and she's just wonderful she's also a kayaker um and she manages I don't know how she does it but she does yeah she she was it it's uh, funnily enough, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to Will Behenna from the Inclusive Paddleboarding Project, um, and he is he has a spinal injury, so he's developed a, a seat for paddleboards. But actually, I mean, he was saying that for him, kayaks aren't much good because he hasn't got the core and the stability. But I imagine if she's got one leg, then she's probably got some awareness and things. Yeah. But this is where a lot of these um, outdoor activities and sports can be, in a way, so much more inclusive because... They're, they're kind of up for the mental challenge of, okay, right, how are we going to do this? As much as the physical one, they're thinking, right, what can we do? How can we adapt this? How can we sort this out? How can we work with this? And I just think, you know, again, there's a lot more inventiveness that comes from being outside and doing these activities. You, you, you're you constantly looking for ways to do different things differently and or include more people. And again, it's something that I think it's not unique to being outside, but I think it's more common in yeah. people who spend a lot of time outside because they're they just want more people to be outside and be active outside and be doing things and I just for me it's that inclusivity and that mindset of you know let's get outside let's do this let's let's just involve everybody that becomes so just amazing and I, I just I mean for me I'd I'd exercising in a gym I can do it I, I will but if I can be outside then I'm exactly the same exactly the same yeah you know, give me give me a, even even if I have to take a diner band or something with me I will um but it's it's just it's just so beneficial in so many ways isn't it and well I just, just, just I do think for certain people um treadmills and static bikes definitely have their place um yeah. you know we you know it's my bread and butter at the end of the day the gym is my bread and butter so I know that they definitely have their place um but we also know that for people who can walk so I quite often say to people can you walk from the car park to the gym well if you can walk from the car park to the gym that's great that's a brilliant brilliant start so we know that you can walk 100 meters or well it's probably less than that so if they can walk 50 meters say so walk 50 meters and if you need to rest rest and then do the same again at home so if they're coming to me once or twice a week I'm encouraging them to do more at home and get outside you know even if it's just walking around their house 
or using their back doorstep to do step ups or a chair in their garden to do sit to stand or anything we can we can make it yeah easier and more accessible that's what I'm really really um keen because I we're living in a cost of living crisis and a gym membership is expensive Sarah and it's not everybody's priority and chances are if you've been referred onto the national exercise referral scheme a gym isn't your priority the people that come to the gym anyway aren't going to be referred necessarily so it's finding these alternatives for people that are low cost and really easily accessible and that's it isn't it and at the end of the day you don't go to the gym to get better at going to the gym no you go to the gym to get better at doing something else and for a lot of people it is just living their everyday life and there's actually a lot you can do to improve the quality of your everyday life and your ability to live a really functional everyday life, there's a lot you can do without having to go to the gym. It's a great, for some people, it's a great way of educating themselves in what they can do, what their limits are and things yes. like that. But equally, it, it, you know, there is there is still a lot you can do for yourself. And like you say, if they're only coming to one session a week, then they've got to be doing something else to, to see the improvements and get the improvements. And, you know, the sort of thing, like step up to your back doorstep, walk around the block a few times because you know that that's so far. Sit to stand, you know, gardening, anything at all. It it's it all adds up to that sort of activity, which means that you, you you're doing enough in your everyday life without actually having to say, oh, it's four o'clock, it's time for my exercise class. Yes. You, you've already done everything, and you know whether it's dog walking or walking the kids to school or whatever. It, it's that everyday kind of activity, isn't it, that we want Absolutely. to really promote and as much of it outdoors as possible. Even, I mean, never mind everything else, but, you know, vitamin D, we know that from October to March, it's very, very, very hard to get enough vitamin D yeah. um, into your system in, in the Northern Hemisphere because of the, the lack of daylight hours. But I know that they say that particularly for older adults, you should be out mid-morning, out in natural light because it has so many benefits for so many aspects of our health might not be boosting your vitamin d the way it it needs to be boosted but you're still getting the benefits of that natural light um, um into your I, system. Was, I had a just before we chatted i was having a look at some research and one of the things that was said was that um sunlight on the back of the retina actually boosts um serotonin levels which Mm. is our mood stabilizer isn't it so reduces anxiety and depression so yeah sunlight and osteoporosis obviously yeah and of course in you know in um in the winter quite often you you know you, you spend you're indoors yeah during daylight hours you know you 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 walk to work you go to work you get take your kids to school whatever you do is in the morning when it's either still dark or it's quite gloomy um by the time everyone's ready to do something it's gloomy again so you never get that and that's why i think it's so important that as adults as kids everybody we get at least you know 15 20 minutes a day out in that natural light to boost i think our as well i levels. had a good chat with my husband who um is an electrician and you know some days in the winter he'll start at half seven eight o'clock and it's dark and he'll get to a job and work in an airing cupboard or a cupboard or a garage all day and then come home and it's still dark and you know that's got to have a serious impact on your mental health as well if you're doing you know if you if you're in that kind of job day after day it's so hard um And going back to when I was, um, when I was unwell. So at the, you know, I'm one of those people, like I say, I struggle with FOMO, (laughs) fear of missing out. So on a nice evening, I struggle to think of what not to do. (laughs) On a nice evening, I'm like, oh, should we have a barbecue? Or should we go outside down? Should we go to the beach? Or should we go up a hill? Or what should we do? Uh, And and it is a bit manic. And I know (laughs) that was part of my personality, you know. When I was ill, I was ill through the summer months. And the fatigue was 
absolutely debilitating. It was horrific. Like I, you know, I, I really struggle to explain how bad it was. But it was a really nice day. And I remember my husband saying, come on, we all need to get outside. What should we do? I couldn't think of a single thing to do. Really? My brain had changed so much. But I was inside all the time. I was in bed all the time. So I didn't have, you know, all those. I, yeah, I'm not, it, I was ill. I was ill. I did have a virus. Um, I did have long COVID, but I didn't. I wasn't getting the sunlight um, and things like that that would help because, just because I didn't have the energy. And all we did is he said, come on, let's get in the van. And he, we all got in, in our van um, and we drove up the road, not very far away, and we just went for a, a 10-minute walk along the river, I think it was. And that, I, was, I was exhausted. And then we had to come back. But I remember sitting in the car thinking, why couldn't I think about doing that? Why yeah. could I, why was that not in my head? Why couldn't I think? So as a result, that's really helped me with my referrals. Because I now know that when somebody comes along and says, well, I don't know what to do. I know why, because their brain yeah. literally can't think what to do, has no idea what to do. That, that inspiration is not there. So I've encouraged people uh, recently to go on, well, if they live in a town or a city, but um, to go to a shop or just get an activity tracker, go online and get an activity tracker, because it's all about movement. At the end of the day, a yeah. lot of the people that are referred, we just need to get them moving more. And I keep saying it doesn't matter how you're moving. You know, even if you're sitting in a chair, moving your arms and legs, it's burning energy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and we know very often, well, mental health really affects those um, cardiovascular diseases that you know a lot mm. of them go hand in so hand so much more common in people with a mental health condition absolutely absolutely and, and disabilities as well actually um, yes disabilities, things like um wheelchair users quite often you know cardiovascular disease is one of the biggest issues that they have yeah um, so yeah any sort of activity boosts both physical and mental health doesn't it yeah so yeah. i've become a lot I'm more open-minded. It's given me a real insight into the other side, let's say. Yeah. So when people say, I just don't know what to do, you get why they don't know. Absolutely. It's not just, oh, for goodness sake, you know, look at what's going on around here. It's more, I get that because your mind is just frozen almost. Completely, yeah. completely. <laughs> What's, yeah. what's, I remember years ago I used to work in central London and I'd, we'd get up in the winter, we'd get up in the dark, we'd get on the tube, we'd get off the tube, it was still dark, we'd go to work where we actually worked three or four floors underground, so down rather than anything else, and then you'd finish the day, you'd come out and it was dark, you'd get the tube home, and it didn't see daylight. One guy said, he said, my wife wouldn't buy me a solar power watch, and I told her there's no point. <laughs> <laughs> I never seen the sunlight. We were like mole people, but I, I really do think it had an impact on my mental health because I just never felt like I was breathing the air. Um, and even in the middle of London, I still wanted to breathe air, even if it was smoggy air. It was it was so um, important. But just what's the best way? So for somebody who, who doesn't know where to start, like you say, who's just sitting there thinking, I, I, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm not ready to go swimming and I'm not fit enough to climb a hill or I don't live near a beach. How Where can people start? Um so an activity tracker, whether it be a watch or your mobile phone, I think is always really good just to help you get moving more than you are now. So like we've discussed before, Sarah, if you're at the end of the day, if your watch or whatever, your activity tracker says you've done 1000 steps uh, the next day, you know, this 10,000 steps a day is so unrealistic for so many people. And I know that there's new research say it doesn't have to be 10,000 no. steps. I think it's 6,000 now, isn't yes, it? Yes, to get the benefits, it's yeah. anything over six. It's, it's a really bizarre number, isn't it? Um, like 6,067. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. 
but anything more than somebody is doing right now is better than nothing, isn't it? So an activity tracker, I think, is a key to a lot of people. And finding somebody, anybody to do it with is also yeah. really helpful. Yeah, really, really helpful. It, and it's it's like you say there, isn't it? It's if, if you're doing, I mean, some is better than none. And that's always been a big thing of a lot of the, the, the top fitness. Some is better than none. And more is better than some. But, you know, if you're doing nothing at the moment, you know, just sort of think, where can I add in five minutes? Um, it doesn't have to be outside initially, but if you can get outside for five minutes when you're not doing it normally and and but but it's outside where it's not like just going to the car to go to the shops or something like that. Going outside for five minutes just to be outside rather than for any purpose. Most of us have got five minutes to spare here or there or like you say you get up a bit earlier than the rest of the family and you'll read a book and or sit outside and do that so it could be as simple as get up five minutes earlier and spend five minutes outside but it's it's tracking it isn't it it's just what what did I do today what can I do a bit more of tomorrow I know a lot of people who've said to me I haven't got time I haven't got time to do this and 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 there are people out there who genuinely don't have time and I understand that if you look at your mobile phone how much time you've spent on your mobile phone I think the average is four hours now isn't it four hours a day a lot of people spend four hours a day on their mobile phones so if they could it's what we prioritize isn't it we're all different and we all prioritize different things yes but it is. But another thing that I've read, actually, that, that I, I've tried it, actually, when I've been unable to get outside for whatever reason. And but it's it's almost like um, visualizing yourself walking somewhere outside. So either a favorite place that you remember or somewhere that you imagine you'd love to be. So even just five minutes imagining yourself being outside in that environment can help. It's not it's not quite the same but it's a start and but you know it's it's you've got to start somewhere haven't you and if it's just a couple of minutes then that's that's better than you're doing already that's a win and I think that's the main thing for me is don't think you've got to do an hour 10,000 steps this or that it's just just do a bit more than you're doing now absolutely the uh so if I had a pound for every time this is the most two most bizarre statements I've been told I've got to get fit, but I don't like salad and I don't like running. Those are the two <laughs> things quite I hear so often. I don't, you don't have to be, you don't have to run. Yeah. It's finding some, anything, something that you love. So it doesn't feel like exercise as well. That's what I really, and that's why I think if you do, if you have a friend or if you go on social media, you know, you think, oh, I'd quite like to have a go at this and ask on social media, does anybody want to have a go at this with me? quite often you'll find somebody um you know and we I found a really great group of people through social media just by doing that just by saying I'm I'm gonna do this I want to go for a dip in the sea once a month it's throughout the year does anybody want to join me and I bet there'll be loads of people thinking oh yeah I really want to do that I'm so glad they asked because they don't want to be the first one to ask or they think that they'll get no response it's really important absolutely Uh, Rachel thank you so much for coming on to talk about this it's I know something we could talk about for ages and ages and ages but um it's been really really good to talk to you and I'm sure I'd love to get you back on to talk a little bit more about because I know you do quite a bit on mindfulness as well yeah so maybe come back on again in a few weeks and talk a little bit about mindfulness and about um just activities generally really because I think like I say there are so many options out there and it's sometimes it's just asking the question on on social media or in your friendship groups or of your neighbor because they might go oh didn't you know about this didn't you know about that um and it's it's just I I run a little walking group and I always say look if you want to go for a walk just post say I fancy going for a walk I'll be at the here at this place and people say oh I don't really want to do that they wait for it to be organised, but actually take the initiative, organise it, you know, and you'd be surprised at how many people actually want to do it and really appreciate the fact that you've started something. You don't have to keep it going. Other people will. 
Um, but it's it's just those first steps, isn't it? But like I say, thank you so much. I should say, Dior Kambar for coming on. Croeso Canes. Thank you ever so much. Um, but thank you so much for coming on because for me, it's all, let's all start thinking outside, you know. Never mind the box, just, just think outside because it is the best place to be, isn't it? Whatever you're doing. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Rachel. You've been listening to Creating Active Lives. Don't forget to like, to subscribe and to share with your friends. Thank you to my guest, Rachel, and goodbye from me, Sarah. I will see you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to Creating Active Lives with me, Sarah Blythe, and my guest. Join me each week for more on how to create and sustain everyday activity and follow me online at Fitness Career Mentor or Fab Newless if you're interested in career development and more on creating active lifestyles.